Call in meeting order. Welcome to the uh, City of Milpitas Planning Commission, December 14th, 2022, seven o'clock. Um, but there's no one here in the chamber. So those of you, anyone on Zoom or streaming on uh, YouTube, uh, if you wish to make any public comments, uh, instructions are in the meeting agenda, uh, register via the link provided there. Next item, uh, Pledge of Allegiance, Commissioner Galang. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, their God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, uh, Ms. Medina. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, everyone. I will now take attendance, starting with Commissioner Albana. Present. Commissioner Awasti. Present. Chair Chuan. Present. Vice Chair Sierradella. Present. Commissioner Galang. I'm here. Present. Commissioner Medina Ashby. Present. Commissioner Mosin is absent this evening. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next item, conflict of interest declaration, city attorney. Thank you, Chair. Uh, ask each of the commissioners whether he or she has any financial or personal conflict of interest related to any of the items on tonight's agenda. Uh, Ms. Medina, would you go down the roll, please? Commissioner Albana? None. Commissioner Awasti? None. Chair Chuan? None. Vice Chair Sierradella? None. Commissioner Galang? None. Com Commissioner Medina Ashby? None. Thank you. Let the record reflect there are no conflicts. I will also ask each of the commissioners to please disclose any campaign contributions of $100 or more received within the last 12 months from any of the parties entering into contracts with the city and, well, mm -hmm. with any of the parties uh, received from the development project applicant for development projects on tonight's agenda. Ms. Medina. Commissioner Albana. None. Commissioner Wasti. None. Chair Chuan. None. Vice Chair Sierradella. None. Commissioner Galang. Commissioner Medina Ashby. None. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. All right, thank you. Next item, approval agenda. Can I get a motion to approve the meeting agenda for December 14th, 2022? I make a motion to approve the agenda. For this. Got a motion from Commissioner Wasi. Do I have a second? I second. I got a second from Commissioner Medina Ashby. I'm going to go down the roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Medina Ashby. Yes. Commissioner Wasti. Aye. Commissioner Galang. Aye. Commissioner Albana. Aye. Vice Chair Ciudella. Aye. Chair Chuan is aye. Uh, unanimous uh, agenda is approved. Next item, can I uh, get a motion to approve the meeting minutes for November 9th? I make a motion to approve the minutes for November 9th. Okay, I got a motion from Com Commissioner Medina Ashby. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Commissioner for Com uh, Commissioner Albana, roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Medina Ashby. Aye. Commissioner Awasti. Aye. Commissioner Galang. Aye. Commissioner Albana. Aye. Vice Chair Ciardella. Aye. Chair Chuan is aye. Um, uh, meeting minutes for November 9th are approved. Next, uh, announcements. Do any of the planning commissioners have any announcements? Okay, no announcements. Uh, planning Director, you have some announcements? Thank you, Mr. I have no announcements tonight, but I would refer the planning commissioners to my email earlier this week about uh, a few different items and upcoming items for next the first meeting in january thank you okay thank you next item public forum those interested are invited to address planning commission on any subject not on tonight's agenda or via zoom webinar instructions are in the agenda speakers may provide their name and city of residence for the recording secretary's record and comments may be limited to three minutes or less as an item not listed on Janet, no response is required from city staff or the planning commission and no action can be taken. Planning commission may instruct the staff to place the item on a future meeting agenda. 
Ms. Medina, do we have anyone uh, in the queue to for public comment? Chair, we do not. All right, thank you. All right, next item, public hearing, uh, item number 9-1, planning director. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll make just a few brief comments. I'll turn the time over to our uh, Metro plan project manager and the consultant team. Um, at, I just, by way of introduction, you'll recall that at your previous meeting in early November, we had a formal um, presentation on the Milpitas Metro specific plan, which is an update to the 2008 transit area specific plan. And then um, we were informed that the planning commission would have an additional four to five weeks really to review the plan. There's quite a bit of material there and uh, to look that over. And then we would come back to this meeting for a formal action on, uh, on a recommendation to the city council on both the supplemental, or excuse me, the subsequent environmental impact report and the plan document itself. So we're back before you tonight with the plan. We did prepare a very brief uh, staff report. And also we have a very brief um, PowerPoint presentation that the consultant team will give, and then we're here to answer any final questions that you may have. And then we are very pleased to present this to you for a recommendation to the council. And it's currently scheduled to be heard uh, for adoption by the council in early February, 2023. So with that, I'll turn the time over to the project manager, Kevin Riley. We also have our consultants, Jane Lynn and Christina Paul here tonight um, to also Help with the presentation. Kevin, do you have any additional comments that you would like to make? Well, I, I thank you, Ned. I just want to say that again, I'm I'm proud to be a part of this. Um, there's been a lot of work that's gone into this. I think much more than what we first thought it was going to be when I came in here in 2019. Um, but anyway, I, I find it a pleasure, Chair Chuan and commissioners, to be in front of you again. Um, we hope we can move this forward. This is a very special place. It's obviously a very special um, plan that you have in front of you and a special opportunity for the city to be able to do you know something that's you know unique in this valley. You have a you know confluence of BART and Bright Rail. And uh, you know it's a very uh, unique opportunity for 500 plus acres of land. Um, and with that, I'll I'll say that I've said enough, and I'll turn it over to Jane and Christina um, to move this thing forward. And uh, I wish you all a very good evening of it. And I'll sit back and be happy to answer any questions. Jane, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you, Ned, and um, good evening to all the planning commissioners. Um, we do have a really brief presentation um, since we did uh, come to you on November 9th um, with a full presentation. This is just a refresher and to make sure we are all on the same page for what we're trying to achieve tonight. So um, with that, I'm going to try to share my screen. I'm hoping that everyone can see it. Okay, great. Um, so uh, here we are, uh, we're at the final draft of the Milpitas Metro specific plan. This has been a culmination of a lot of great work. Um, just to give you a refresher of the vision, it has many, uh, it, it takes into account many of the different unique aspects of this district. And um, the main vision is to create a complete and unique urban neighborhood. And really that is a combination of so many different things um, anchored by transit and the retail in the area and all the great pathways in the sh shared public spaces and really trying to make it as memorable as and affordable as possible. So these are um, these are some of the, this is just part of the vision and um, the uh, specific plan itself has six different chapters and you can see here the chapter headers. Um, it is a well illustrated specific plan and um, it really covers a lot including land use, site and building design standards and guidelines, mobility and circulation, infrastructure and implementation. And just to give a little bit of uh, context here, so much has happened. This is um, 
it, this is a continuation of the transit area specific plan. And since that plan was adopted in 2008, um, a lot of new development has ha happened. And in fact, here you can see all the different active projects that are going on right now. And there's quite a bit of new uh, building out there that you can see in this area. It's very exciting to see it all out there. A lot of new housing and mixed use. And um, it really is becoming that complete neighborhood that uh, we are hoping in the vision. And the city has also done quite a bit to invest in this area and improve the infrastructure here. Uh, not only has um, the BART station and the VTA Transit Center um, opened since we started the project, there has been some really great improvements, including the pedestrian overcrossing um, that is on Montague. There's a lot of new streetscape. Um, and since the adoption of the task, there's been new parks that have opened and lots of um, new green spaces that help people connect throughout the neighborhood. The Metro plan is meant to really continue all of that. And um, and actually, I'm going to uh, call on Christina for just a moment. She is a big part of our team as well, Christina Paul with M Group, just to go over the next couple slides about the plan area. Good evening, Chair and Commissioners. It's a pleasure to be here with you this evening uh, and to talk through this work with you, uh, not, in, not in all of the detail, but, but in some detail. So I just want to take a moment to reflect on the image that you see on the left. You can see here the transformation of the Milpitas metro area between 2006 and 2019. And you can see that much of the lower and, and right hand areas of the of the plan area redeveloped under the previous master plan that was the uh, transit area specific plan or TASP and our effort has been an effort to update this plan and to ensure that all of that residential that you see going in actually gets complemented by commercial and by other mixed uses as well as connections for bikes and peds and autos to make sure that this is a complete neighborhood as Jane was mentioning. On the right, you can see a couple of changes that we made to the task. Uh, there was an expansion to the East to incorporate the innovation district between the plan area and the highway. That gives the city an opportunity to promote the vision in the general plan of having a research and R&D and employment hub there just close to the BART station. Um, we also incorporated a couple of properties on Main Street that were previously part of the Gateway Main Street plan. Um, as that plan is getting updated and this plan uh, was in the process, it made sense to consolidate those areas a little bit as this area is actually closer to the core of the task. And another major change in this in approach between this task and the Metro plan is that we're actually incorporating the Great Mall as a, as a potential change area. The folks who own the Great Mall were interested in potentially developing some mixed uses, potentially developing some housing alongside their successful commercial. And so this is an opportunity for that mall to evolve and to continue to be a successful land use. Um, and then we were also focused with the Tango District in particular, and making sure that there were connections across and to that district, not such that they create a lot more traffic, but such that folks can access parks in there um, and that they can get over to the BART station. But again, making sure that that neighborhood core doesn't see a lot of cut through traffic. Next slide. So you can see here the image on the left hand side is the TASP plan and the image on the right hand side is the Metro plan. In the TASP plan, again, the Great Mall area, that whole chunk of land between the major streets there wasn't envisioned to see a lot of change, but uh, there was envisioned to be changed along the major arterials, Great Mall Parkway, Montague, et cetera. And a lot of that has occurred. It started with townhomes and then became denser and denser as development moved towards the towards Great Mall Parkway and towards the BART station. And then that BART station is a major catalyst that was anticipated uh, when the task was written, but now will really come into play as folks see that opportunity to connect to residents as well as potential employment hubs. You'll, you'll notice the blue 
uses that are clustered in the innovation district area and then a bit in the Great Mall area and around that BART station. Those are lands that are intended to be largely commercial uses, largely employment lands. We've been working very closely with the Economic Development Department uh, to ensure that this meets their vision for an innovation district and that we are preserving some of those lands for employment and that even though the residential uh, market for development has been really strong over the last 10 years, we can continue to have those opportunities for commercial development when that makes sense for the market. And that helps us to have that complete neighborhood that we've been talking about. Uh, you'll see that the little, the more intense colors, uh, the darker purples and browns tend to be clustered along arterials. And that's reflective of having a little bit more um, intensity of development around those, around those strips. And that's what you'll see today, you, you know, the farther you get away from Great Mall Parkway, for example, you'll see more townhomes. And then as you get close to the BART station, there's a bit more intensity. Great. Thank you so much, Christina. I'm just going to go quite briefly over some of the major districts that are within the plan, including the Great Mall District. And again, as Christina mentioned, um, what we really are showing here is the opportunity to increase the density at the Great Mall and to um, make it possible for um, this to be part of the the neighborhood that is really being built out right now by including more parks and more streets and the infrastructure that um, would be part of that as well. And then, of course, the innovation district, um, Christina spoke to this, so I'll gloss over it a little bit, but um, this also really brings more jobs closer to um, the BART station and uh, is a very appropriate place for it. And these are some of the connections into the Tango District and the park that was mentioned before. This is, there's a small part of it that is existing today, but um, much more of it will, uh, has, well, the land has been purchased and more of it will emerge as we um, see it in the future, uh, in the near future. In fact, a uh, bridge will also connect across and this will really give a lot of people direct access to the BART station, which is really incredible for this neighborhood. Um, and then the trails and um, the, the park and the open space, the, those all really help connect to the other parts of um, the neighbor the neighborhoods that are right next to the bar and across Montague and to the south as well. Uh, McCandless district has just a little bit uh, in it as well. We really are addressing the main street as that was an expansion area. Um, and there there's also um, all, a lot of opportunities to connect through with the park as well. And um, I want to just give Christy a chance also. Christy is with ICF and um, she is working on our CEQA and the SEIR, the subsequent EIR, and just wanted to give you a chance, Christy, to uh, speak to a little bit about the SEIR. Great, thank you. Yeah, as is shown on this slide, the subsequent environmental impact report looked at a wide range of resource areas, and it based the analysis in part on the previously certified TASP EIR, so really focused on sort of the incremental change between the two. And a number of impacts were found to be significant, and those are listed here. And a lot of them are related to construction and would be temporary. So some temporary air quality emissions, temporary generation of noise. And there would also be some changes in operational noise and operational emissions. And as part of the SEIR, we have identified mitigation measures to reduce these impacts and I'm happy to answer any more specific questions on those if there are any. Thanks, Jane. Thank you, Christy. So um, this comes to the end of our brief presentation and really what we're hoping from to get from you is um, a recommendation to adopt um, a resolution recommending that the Milpitas Metro plan and the subsequent EIR are adopted um, so that this neighborhood can uh, continue to flourish. So with that, I hand this back to perhaps Ned. Yes, thank you, Jane. So um, with that presentation, and then hopefully you can recall um, the larger, longer presentation and discussion that we had at your previous meeting, we're again, happy to present this to the Planning Commission for your uh, recommendation to the Council.
Are there any additional questions? We're happy to answer those. The materials we've heard tonight. All right. Thank you, Planning Director. Uh, I also wanted to note that uh, uh, Economic Development Director uh, Alex Andrade is also on. I don't know if he had any comments to make, maybe before um, taking questions from the Planning Commission. Um, Director Andrade, do you have any comments you wish to make? Sure. Good evening, Chair Chuan, Vice Chair Ceradella, and Planning Commissioners. Alex Andrade, Director of Economic Development, also overseeing the housing team on an interim basis. Pleasure to have the opportunity to speak in front of you. It's been an absolute pleasure to collaborate with the planning team, Ned and Kevin, as well as the city manager's office. And the same with uh, Jane and Christina. It's been a great pleasure, and I've been able to learn quite a bit from them. The economic development team is excited and strongly supports this specific plan process and uh, specific plan overall. You've heard uh, both Jane and Christina talk about the Innovation District. It's an important place for us as it relates to ensuring that we have a vision for a modern office R&D research and development space where we put jobs near public transit and new residents. And so um, we, I'm here in case you have any questions related to economic vitality or trying to grow the innovation economy in Milpitas. Uh, just know that we're looking at this from various benefits to ensure that the city and its fiscal su sustainability includes um, a diverse set of future fiscal revenues. Of course, preserving and protecting the employment lands and stimulating uh, job opportunities. So with that, I think I'll just cut it short. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, happy to answer any questions um, if you have any. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director Andrade. Um, at this time, the, the, any planning commissioners have any uh, questions? You know, I know we went through this in uh, November 9th. Um, so if you have any final questions for uh, staff or any of the other presenters or uh, Director Andrade. If you don't have any questions, do um, if there's no questions, then this being a public hearing item, um, we don't have anyone here in the uh, in the chambers. Uh, Ms. Medina, do we have any um, hands up for um, public comments? We do, Chair. We have Lola Tor Torney. Okay. All right. Um, I guess we can allot the the three minutes. So um, uh, welcome, uh, Ms. Torney. Uh, you have three minutes. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me, and thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. I'm Lola Torney, Transportation Planner with VTA, and the VTA liaison for the Metro Plan. I want to commend Milpita staff, especially Kevin Riley, for their incredible effort to bring us in early in the planning process as a partner in this plan. We held several meetings with the planning team throughout the process and really felt like staff was not just checking a box and reaching out to us. We applaud the visionary aspects of this plan that really isn't afraid to think outside the normal planning box. This is the first planning effort I'd heard of that is willing to formally acknowledge that in some cases, swaths of commercial land and parking lot space in the area, like the Great Mall, could be better utilized to help with the housing issues we have in the South Bay. And now many other cities are following that example and thoughtfully considering the conversion of some commercial space to housing. We also applaud Milpitas's embrace of working to reduce the dependence on personal vehicles to move around. This also includes not just transit connections with the new BART station, but also better and more comfortable bicycle and pedestrian connections for residents and visitors to and through the planning area. Lastly, we look forward to working with the city on identifying and installing public art in the area, including on and under our light rail tracks that will help bring vibrancy and hopefully actual light to an area currently only served by cars that can make the spaces feel more inviting and pleasant to hang out. Thank you again for your continued partnership on this and other planning efforts, and I hope this plan is adopted by Council so we can get moving. All right, thank you, Ms. Uh, Torney. Um, uh, Ms. Medina, we have any others uh, in the queue? We have Irvish Kumar Mehta. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, Mr. Mr. Mehta, you have three minutes. Thank you very much to uh, the respective uh, commission member as a as ex-commissioner. Uh, 
uh, you know, as part of the city of Milpitas, I wanted to acknowledge just some of the facts about what as a part of a plan, the team has been uh, representing about the, the urbanizing concept uh, that has been placed for the city of Milpitas. First of all, it is important to recognize uh, some, of the, some of the changes that has been brought to, uh, to the city of Milpitas, as well as uh, the new concept of having a better space utilization, provide, providing an open space preserve, and th thinking about out of box strategy where leveraging the most of the innovative technologies out there and providing the means for the people where this, the technology that drives the most of the human life that's taking place. So a couple of good, uh, good takeaways on that. Uh, smart services are getting enabled. Uh, new, new new districts are coming up, which is Tango, Piper, uh, Innovation District, and CHAP. Uh, along with that, is it is important that when any nomination of the districts which are being made, it is to be made sure that that how those nominations are being made. For example, when any particular street is being uh, uh, Great Mall Parkway and the Capitol Avenue, or the Montague Expressway. This particular names and nomination of the streets are basically based upon the historical significance of the roads and the streets that's been established within the city. And that has a particular significance as a part of the history of the city. So it is important that, that how this nomination of the districts and the redistricting which is happening in the city is supposed to be, taking, is supposed to be being taken, uh, taken into consideration before any particular districts are being formed. In the same way, if it is going to be a case where any industrialization concept and the commercialization concept that are being placed as a part of a development, it is to be made sure that we continue to maintain the sanity of the names and the label that we are placing. If it is to be made sure that there is going to be an innovation district, we have to make sure the type, the type of urbanization, the type of buildings, the type of a technology, the type of a services, and as well as the adherence and adjacent to different kinds of a services that we are providing we have to maintain the equality on that. So such that the entire architecture remains intact and the same. Also for the points about the CEQA guidelines that's been maintained, while all the construction they are being placed, it is to be made sure that it doesn't cause any environmental harms or nor it is cause any kind of a hazardous to the people of the city of Milpitas. Thank you very much for the consideration. Thank you, Mr. Mehta. Uh, Ms. Medina, do we have anyone else in the queue? Yes, we have Barbara Navarro. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Navarro, you have uh, three minutes. Good evening, Planning Commission. Um, I represent a group called Milpitas Involved Citizens, and we've been following this uh, plan for a long time. We've been involved in many of the outreaches. We love it. We love the idea of connecting the bike and pedestrian paths and all the parks that are we're looking forward to, and even the beautifying it with art. So it's it's really a different area now than it was uh, 15 years ago. And we're hoping in five years, it'll look even better than it does now. And we're also hoping that it will connect very nicely with the Main Street specific plan. So yes, we would say, go for it. Let's do this. Let's get it rolling. Let's make it even better than what it already is. And I do feel for the uh, people that purchase the homes that don't have adequate parking, but I understand what uh, the city is trying to do. And I hope that the people that purchase or rent a, the area, the well, homes in the area will understand as well and um, start using some of the um, mass transit that will be available in the area. So thank you very much and um, good luck with approving this plan. All right, thank you, Ms. Navarro. Um, do we have any other comments? Uh, coming in, Ms. Medina? We do not. All right. Um, can I get a motion to close the public hearing? I hope to close the public hearing. Okay, got a motion from Commissioner Obana. Do I have a second? Second. And I got a second from Commissioner Medina Ashby. I'm gonna do roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Medina Ashby. Aye. Commissioner Awasti. Aye. Commissioner Galong. Aye. Commissioner Albana. Aye. Vice Chair Ciardella. Aye. Chair Chuan is aye. 
public hearing is now closed for item number nine dash one. Um, okay, do I have any uh, final um, questions or comments, uh, deliberations from any of the commissioners? If not, uh, do I have any motions? And uh, can we put the the item or the uh, the presentation showing the uh, the recommendation? Any questions, comments, motions? I got Commissioner Galang. No, uh, like to. Uh... There's no comments. I'd like to ask my fellow commissioners if I can make a motion. Okay, go, or, go, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to adopt um, resolution number 22-025, recommending that the city council certify the Metro, uh, Milpitas Metro Plan subsequent environmental impact report, um, SCH number 200-603-2091, and adopt the Malpitas Metro Pacific Plan. Okay, got a motion from Commissioner Glong. Do I have a second? A second. And I got a second from uh, Commissioner Obana. I'm going to do roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Medina Ashby. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Wasti. Aye. Commissioner Glong. Aye. Commissioner Obana. Aye. Vice Chair Ciudela. Aye. Chair Chuan is aye. Motion passes. Uh, resolution is adopted. So thank you. Thank you so much for all the hard work uh, that went into this. Okay, next item for uh, public hearing is 9-2, uh, uh, Planning Director. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Our second public hearing item tonight is a uh, development project. It's by Toll Brothers uh, with Townhomes. The, the presentation will be made by our senior planner, Michael Fasadi. He's actually pinch hitting tonight for our senior planner, Lillian Van Hua, who uh, has been uh, managing this project and uh, prepared the staff report. That she is, uh, is is on bed rest for her. She's nearing the full term of her pregnancy. So we're looking forward to a, a very happy announcement from her, but we hope it can wait just a little bit longer until um, the babies are ready to come. But we appreciate Michael for stepping in to, um, to present the staff report tonight. I would like to mention again, thank you for your support on the, the Metro plan. It just happens that this is our latest project in the Metro plan, the, well, the transit area specific plan area, soon to be the Metro plan area. This is located in the Tango district that we just talked about in the previous presentation. As I mentioned, it's a, a project by Toll Brothers and they are nearing completion of, we'll call it a, an initial phase or uh, a very similar project of townhome project that's just across uh, Tarab Court uh, from the project that's before you tonight, and um, this is, this project is very complementary to what has been built, or in uh, the, the final stage of that project is currently under construction. It's turned out very nicely. Um, this this project will is just the next step in completing that neighborhood. It's if you're if you're down there anytime soon, you'll see on Sango Court and Tarab Court. Uh, eventually, those two roads will connect and, and that's what we refer to it as the Tango District, Tarab and Sango together. But the um, there's a lot of construction going on now. There's two 200% two affordable projects on Sango Court and they're, they're turning out very nicely. And then this project, um, it's definitely a work in progress. And so I know some people have questioned, why is the city you know, allowing this housing to be built in this area? It's, it's gradually transitioning from that industrial neighborhood that of of the past into the you know the vibrant uh, walkable residential neighborhood that is envisioned in the transit area and it's it's quite remarkable to see that happening before our eyes um, this project is consistent with the principles of the transit area specific plan and the metro plan that you have just heard about and um, i'll turn the time over to michael to present the staff report Thank you, Planning Director. Welcome, uh, Mr. Fasadi. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Director Thomas. And good evening to, um, again, Chair, uh, Vice Chair Commissioners, fellow staff, guests, and residents of Milpitas. 
As mentioned, the item before you is a request for a development application for the Toll Brothers for the two properties, one at 675 Trade Zone and 1951 Tariff Court. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the application is for a number of different entitlements that include a site development permit, conditional use permit, vesting tentative map, density bonus permit, tree removal permit, and environmental assessment to allow the demolition of two industrial buildings, remove and replace approximately 55 ordinance sized trees in order to develop 78 townhome condominiums with 12 attached dwelling accessory dwelling units and plant up to 136 new trees at both 675 Trade Zone Boulevard and 1951 Tarot Court. The development will consist of 13 multifamily residential buildings up to 37 feet in height about three stories in height uh, with 191 vehicle parking spaces and associated site improvements on two sites equating uh, 4.1 acres. The developer has proposed to build uh, 12 below market rate units, which would be for sale, which allows them, the developer, to invoke the state density bonus law pursuant to government code section 65915 and Senate Bill 330 also known as the Housing Crisis Act. By invoking state density bonus law and SB 330, the developer is eligible for concessions, waivers, and parking standards different from the city requirements. This is a picture of a rendering of the general building design for the townhome units. Next slide, please. Here's a satellite view of both properties um, outlined in red. The site is located along the southern edges of Milpitas, west of uh, Lundy Place and north of Trade Zone Boulevard. Next slide, please. The map above demonstrates the project site, the project site zoning designation and overlay district. The properties are also located in the transit area specific plan or TASP area. And as, as uh, Director Thomas stated in the future Metro Melpita specific plan area. The project is located in the multifamily high density residential within the transit oriented development um, zoning district. We refer to it as R3-TOD. And this is represented in the light tan color. The site, the site is surrounded by R3 TOD zone properties, creating a complementary use and development style of what's being proposed. Next slide, please. The re project requires a site development permit to develop the 78 townhome residential units. In total, the project would include 26 two and three bedroom units. Those units would either have two and a half or three bathroom configuration. The project will also include 40 or 52 four bedroom units. Each four bedroom unit will have three to three and a half baths. 18 attached ADUs will be included on the ground floor of 18 four bedroom townhomes, which creates a density of 90 residential units with 22 dwelling units per acre. In order to develop in the R3 zoning district, you need at least 20 units per acre. Um, the project will also include uh, site improvements as like guest parking, um, internal driveways to access the parking garages, as stated before, 136 new trees, and landscaping buffers along the public uh, streets. Next slide, please. There we go. Thank you. Uh, the project also includes a vesting tentative map, which can only be approved via conditional use permit. The tentative map will allow the developer to subdivide the units into condominiums where they will be made for sale. Unlike fee simple ownership, condominium ownership means that the owner has the individual title to the inside space of its unit, but all the owners will have an undivided interest in the remainder of the property, which is managed what we know as through a homeowners association. Because the subdivision is more than five residential units in size, the City Council has the final decision on the project. What we're going to be asking the Planning Commission this evening is for a recommendation of approval. Next slide, please. The project also includes a density bonus permit, which is allowed for projects that incorporate affordable housing units. The City of Milpitas, via our affordable housing ordinance, requires all developers to incorporate up to 15% of their total units affordable. Those units are also known as 
below market rate units or, or BMR units for short. The image above represents all 78 townhomes. 15% of 78 is 11.7. Therefore, the developer is proposed to develop 12 BMR units identified as the townhomes with the red dots on them. Since the city has an affordable housing ordinance, which has a greater percentage of affordable housing than state density bonus law requires, the developer is automatically granted state density bonus law provisions. Next slide, please. Density bonus law prohibits local jurisdictions, such as the city of Milpitas, from requiring a developer to meet certain objective design standards, like setbacks, heights, or even required a number of parking spaces. As long as a developer can demonstrate that relief of the standard equates to an actual identifiable cost reduction. This is referred to as a density bonus waiver. Since this project qualifies for a density bonus permit, the development qualifies for three proposed waivers. The developer is requesting a waiver for the number of compact parking spaces, the configuration of standard parking spaces, and for the amount of parking overall. City code allows our city code and our task standards allow a developer to design 40% of their guest parking as compact parking spaces. Uh, in an effort to create uh, more parking for guests, the developer has requested that we allow a 49% compact parking ratio. So 51% of the parking spaces are, are designed the standards, the other 49% are compact. In regards to standard parking space configuration, um, they've also requested a waiver because for standard parking space configuration, for surface parking, we're, we require developers to create a nine foot by 18 foot vehicle parking space, nine, nine feet by 18 feet. The developers request that we allow a standard parking space of nine feet by 16 feet. Um, as such, they've requested a waiver. And lastly, the developer proposed an overall parking reduction for parking reduction of city standards, not of the state density bonus. The compact parking configurations and parking reductions do provide an actual identifiable cost reduction because there is a financial cost of developed surface parking. Therefore, the developer qualifies for all three waivers. Next slide, please. But I'd like to speak specifically at the parking waiver. And in order to demonstrate the parking requirement, a staff has created a table which shows the parking requirement per the task or per the metro and per the state density bonus. Task requires 212 parking spaces for a project of this size because all projects in TASP include guest parking along with residential unit parking. But state density bonus law limits parking spaces and completely removes guest parking spaces altogether. A developer doesn't need to provide those. Therefore, um, via state density bonus law, 174 vehicle spaces would be required. The developer sees value in providing guest parking, along with providing um, additional storage methods for a multimodal um, transportation within garages, such as um, bike parking spaces and, and just bike storage. But the, the so they have proposed to develop 191 spaces, there we go, which does exceed the density bonus park permit standards and can be approved. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the project's design concept includes three-story building heights consistent with existing and planned residential development along Terra Court and Lundy Drive. The contemporary design includes the following colors and materials you see on the screen. It also includes a comp shingle hip and shed roof design, a mixture of vertical fiber cement and hardy board cement panel siding, um, El Dorado marquee stone accents, those are along um, a limited portions of the ground floor, a metal railings with wood picket fencing, a fiber cement windows and door trim, a modern front entry doors and contemporary garage doors. The colors and materials were chosen to complement the modern day neighborhood that much Toll Brothers um, has, has already built along with some of our other developers. Next slide, please. As previously stated, the project includes the removal of 55 ordinance-sized trees, which will be replaced with up to 136 new trees. 
Additional landscape elements include a four foot wide concrete walkway along the perimeter of the site, a community paseo along Journey Drive, Journey Street, I apologize, that includes arbors, a neighborhood dining area, and casual seating area made of synthetic turf. Tree plantings include street trees to match the Terra Court street trees um, across the street, uh, screening trees along the front of the residences, and flowering accent trees in strategically located places on site. Next slide, please. The TASP requires all new developments to provide parkland or parkland fees to develop open space. The parkland fee is based upon an estimated number of persons expected to reside in the development. And we base those numbers on U.S. Census data uh, and the estimated value of parkland in the city of Milpitas. The developer proposes 78 units, resulting in an estimated population of 194 new Milpitians. Based on this population estimate, the applicant must provide approximately 0 0.86 acres of parkland. We can um, calculate that to a dollar amount, which is approximately $1.9 million. As a developer, develops in tasks, they must um, pay task fees, also known as transit area development impact fees, also a TADF is for short. A portion of the fee pays for parkland. The parks portion of the task fee for this project is valued at approximately $1.6 million, which is equivalent to 0 0.6 acres of parkland. This amount would be applied to the project's parkland requirement, leaving a delta of 0 0.08 acres to be satisfied. So in essence, the developer is required to build 0 0.08 um, acres of parkland on their site. And to satisfy the 0 0.08 acre delta, the applicant has actually incorporated 0 0.34 acres as private recreation space on site, which is, uh, which is permitted per our city code. For example, each townhome has a private balcony. If you took all those balconies, added them together, um, you would have 22,330 square feet. There's also an additional, there's over 5,000, 50,000 square feet of private open space with uh, landscape buffers that are along the perimeter of the site and in the internal courts. Therefore, they're meeting the requirement for open space without having to add any new uh, parks. Next slide, please. The project also includes a design to allow 12 attached ADUs. So they'd all be located on the ground floor of 12 townhomes. The ADUs range in size from 287 to 362 square feet and are furnished with a living sleeping area, bathroom, kitchenette, and separate front door entrance. What you have on the screen are floor plans of two ADU configurations that Toll Brothers plans on developing. Next slide, please. The applicant will need to pay the following impact fees. I previously discussed it. The TATA fee is approximately $3.7 million. And the public art fee will equal to one half of 1% of building development costs. Um, we don't have the development, the building development costs at this time. Typically, that's created um, when the applicant applies for a building permit. Uh, if I, I, I looked at some previous projects and the public art fee, it would probably be in the range of fifteen dollars to $20,000, which would go into our public art fund, which the developer would be required to pay. Next slide, please. A notice was published in the Milpitas Post and a sign was placed on the property. The city also sent approximately 816 postcards informing residents and property owners of the project. We received one comment from a resident that lives in the Parkside community, and their comment didn't have so much to do with this project. It had to do with the extension of Augustus Rathbone Park and just that, you know, housing creates, um, increases traffic congestion. Um, in summary, the extension of Augustus Rathbone Park is currently being contemplated per the Metro plan that was reviewed this uh, before my presentation. And as development comes in and task fees come in, develop, um, the city proposes eventually will develop the park um, and extend the, increase the park size of Augustus Rathbone. Um, that's a plan that's currently in the works. Next slide, please. Lastly, the project has been carefully analyzed against state law, the, Mil the Milpitas General Plan, the TASP and uh, 
components of the metro specific plan and the zoning ordinance, which includes findings that include a compatible design with the neighboring projects, consistency with the goals and policies of the Milpitas zoning ordinance, Milpitas general plan, and Milpitas transit area specific plan. For components of the project that are not consistent with our zoning ordinance, uh, the parking spaces configurations, as I stated before, um, that has been rectified by the allowable waivers for the state density bonus law. Lastly, the project meets the conditions of government code section 66474 regarding subdivision law and the subdivision map act. Next slide, please. This project is exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act per section 15183.3b. This is used for projects that meet certain criteria uh, that include a density over 20 units per acre in an, on an infill site. It's further exempt from CEQA per section 15182 since the project is, con is consistent with the existing TASP and future metro specific plan in regards to density and development. Next slide, please. So in closing, staff recommends the Planning Commission open the public hearing to receive comments, close, move to close the public hearing, uh, consider the exemptions in accordance with CEQA, and adopt resolution number 22-029 recommending City Council approve the site development permit, conditional use permit, vesting tentative map, density bonus permit, tree removal permit, and environmental assessment. This concludes staff summary of the project. Um, before I go, I'd like to introduce you to Nick Kosla. He's the Land Entitlement Director of Toll Brothers for the Northern California Division. He may be able to answer any direct questions associated with Toll Brothers. Nick has uh, brought his team, that includes Ali Sweeney, also with Toll Brothers, Dominic Carucci with RJA Civil Engineers, Scott Prickett with SDG Architects, and Roman DeSoto with R3 Studios Landscape Architecture. Thank you, Commission, for your time. Thank you, Mr. Fasadi. Um, do any of the commissioners have any uh, questions um, as the presentation was going through or uh, staff or Mr. Kozla? i also like to give an opportunity for Mr. Kozla if you had any um, uh, comments you would like to make. Uh, that's, that's great. Do I have a couple minutes? Yes, you do. Okay, fantastic. Chair Chuan, Vice Chair Ciardella, members of the commission. Uh, my name is Nick Kostla with Toll Brothers. We, you know, I, just keep, I thought I'd give you just a little bit of quick background on the project. And then as uh, Michael said, Michael, thanks again for taking over on very short notice for Lillian. Um, great, fantastic presentation. So we, you know, we acquired the project about a year and a half ago. And during our due diligence, we immediately started meeting with city staff. Um, we had tried to acquire a bunch of other properties adjacent to the project, but we just weren't successful. Um, so we had kind of an awkward <laughs> parcel that we had to work with. And so it was great. You know, city staff, we started meeting with Ned and Kevin, Lillian, um, and other departments over a series of, you know, probably three to six months, kind of figured out what land plan could work, architecture could work, how we could make it um, something that's, you know, kind of a carry on from our project to the east our Parkside project, which we're currently selling and buying right adjacent to the site. But, you know, update the architecture, make sure we have an updated kind of a new site plan that we thought worked better um, with, you know, kind of constraints of, of not being able to acquire all the land we wanted. And, um, you know, but really just kind of make what we had at Parkside even better here. And that's what we've, that's what we've done. We submitted an application almost to the day about a year ago. Um, we got our first round of comments back on our pre-application. So then for the last year, we've been working with city staff and fire, uh, just doing a bunch of tweaks on the project. Um, and so tonight, the project you see before you is one that we've you know worked real hard on with city staff. And that relationship's been fantastic. And I just want to personally thank Ned, Kevin, uh, Michael also, and especially Lillian. I'm sorry she can't be here tonight because she's worked very hard on this project. but. Um, as I said, hopefully we'll we'll get to see her uh, maybe at the if there's another hearing um, or at city council. And if you have any questions, our entire design team is here. Um, our head of acquisitions is here. So anyway, thank you so much for hearing me tonight. All right, thank you, Mr. Kozla. Um, let's see. Uh, any questions from any of the commissioners? 
for either uh, planning staff or uh, Mr. Kozla. Okay, if there's no questions, uh, I do note that we got a few other folks on as well too. We have um, our building official, um, Bill Tot, on as well too. Um, I don't. Does Bill have any comments he would like to make? Yeah. Uh, hello, commissioners and uh, staff um, and uh, other members of the uh, community that may be listening. Um, <clears throat> so Mill Peters is um, going through our second round of reach codes, and I applaud uh, Toll Brothers for including the ADUs. We have uh, ADU assistance in terms of a subsidy uh, provided through uh, approval by the council uh, to use ARPA funding and it's on a uh, square footage basis so for instance those um, adus that you have incorporated into this um, project are eligible for that so uh, i just wanted to bring that to light and, and just i'm sure you're probably aware of it uh so whatever those uh, square footage uh representations are for the adus you get a subsidy on the permit fees uh, compliments of the council through ARPA funding. I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, and thank you for including those in the development. All right, thank you. Uh, um, You're welcome. Any any questions for? Um, and I actually just have maybe just one, just maybe if you can talk a little bit about the uh, parking uh, you know, just wanted to, you know, I mean, it's a lot of it's, you know, because of the density bonus law, um, how will the resident, uh, those, the residences, um, and those living there, how will, will they also be aware of the parking situation? And I suppose either, um, planning staff or Mr. Kozla wants to answer, see Ned, if you want to answer as well too. I, I I can't see Ned on the screen, but I can answer it. I, I think. Okay, sure. Okay. <laughs> sure. So, um, so you know, uh, one thing about this project is, is and and Nick, you can tell me if I'm wrong. I believe every unit has a two car garage. Okay. Okay. So those garages themselves are being parked. The buildings, typical vehicle size standards. Um, the city has a direct. Uh, size requirement for compact or for standard spaces i shared with you was nine feet wide by 18 feet along and uh, this was a little back and forth between us and toll brothers um the they're proposed they're requesting the nine by 16 feet but but technically uh, they made an argument and and technically they're they're a bit right the space itself is nine by 18 um where the the curb, the, the kind of tire stop and just the configuration and where the line ends don't get to that 18 feet. But if you were to put a roller out there, you'd get that 18 feet um, length um, just for full, um, just just for the fully disclosed, a compact parking space, um, Cherchua is um, only 16 feet deep. So, um, I'm sorry, I think it's even 15 feet deep. So the Parking spaces they're proposing, whether they're compact or standard, will adequately fit a car. Um, and the the just the code itself, when it refers to the number of compact spaces, we just have you know the, the general requirement when the task was developed in 2012 that said only you're only allowed to develop 40% compact parking spaces. Uh, again, Toll Brothers wants to be able to accommodate for guests. I think they've heard from other um, communities that have that have complained that they don't have an adequate guest parking, and um, they're trying to create as many parking spaces as possible, um, which is why they've asked for the 49% uh, increase compared to 40%. Um, and lastly, the parking waiver, which, which is... Which, which parking itself is kind of um, going away <laughs> uh, in regards to state standards. Um, they are providing 191 spaces when 174 spaces are required. Um, Chair, does that answer your question or? It does. It does. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Any other questions from the commissioners? 
Director Tron. Like, okay, uh, Planning Director. Yeah. Just a couple of comments. Okay. One of the design features that I particularly liked of the site plan, and it, it took us a while and a little bit of back and forth between staff and Toll Brothers to get there. This is a very awkward site. But uh, the design feature that I particularly like is that the guest parking is distributed across the site. It's not all in, in one area and you'd have to walk a long distance to get to the units at one end of one, one end or the other. So they've done a very nice job in distributing the guest parking. And the other thing to keep in mind for this site is, uh, as, I, you know, as mentioned, it's part of the Metro plan area. There is a planned uh, an extension of Milpitas Boulevard that will continue Right now, Milpitas Boulevard wraps around the BART station and sort of ends at Capitol Avenue. But there is there are plans for that street to continue. There will be a new bridge over the Penitentia Creek, and it will provide direct access from this neighborhood to the Milpitas Transit Center and BART service. So within the next few years, when that uh, roadway is completed, uh, this will be a very walkable neighborhood and will be within, I don't know, five, six minute walk of the transit center. So the, of course, the idea there is that the many of the residents would be able to take either light rail or bus or BART uh, to and from their, their homes. And I would add lastly that that same bridge um, provides pedestrian bicycle connection to the trail system that's part of the metro plan that we just discussed. And that trail system will eventually connect over to places like Mabel Matos School and the uh, McCandless Park, as well as the other Parks that are in the neighborhood. So, um, if I, I've, I've had to say several times to you know residents who are living in that neighborhood now will ask, well, when can I have access to the park, or when is this going to be done? And you know, our, the best answer we can give is it's coming. And unfortunately, it's done piecemeal as develop separate developments come in and are completed. Then roadways and trails and different things are are completed. And we we look forward to having that and um, just always having maintaining the vision of the uh, metro plan in front of us. And uh, this is just one piece of that larger puzzle. All right, thank you, planning director. All right, um, okay, if there's no uh, questions or from the uh, planning commission, uh, uh, this being a public hearing item, uh, no one's here in the chambers. Uh, Ms. Medina, do we have anyone in the queue? Chair, we have Irvish Kumar Mehta. Okay, uh, and do we have, how many uh, folks have their hands up uh, in the queue? We have two now. There's two, okay. All right, I think we can uh, allow the three minutes. Okay, uh, Ms. Mehta, go ahead. Thank you, thank you very much again to uh, the chairperson of the committee, as well as the respected commissioners. I think I wanted to emphasize that, you know, what, uh, first of all, a couple of points that, you know, I wanted to bring out the Toll Brothers. As everybody might be aware that, uh, Toll Brothers as a real estate uh, developer that, you know, what type of a prestige and reputation that it consists and what it brings uh, to, uh, what it brings to the, to the city, that becomes the most, uh, most vital aspect. Other aspect, uh, other aspects that, you know, I, I want the commission to consider is the affordable unit pricing. If it is considered to be affordable unit pricing, what, how it differentiates from the other townhomes and the condominium within the city and as well as that, what are the amenities and services and the facilitation that is provided through the Toll Brothers equally in conjunction with the other uh, communities out there is a part of a development within the city of Milpitas. Third, uh, with the structurization, uh, the most important aspect, aspects are the floor plans and and the amount of, uh, and the amount of, uh, amount of the land utilization that is being done as a part of a property development. When any particular property development is being considered, it is important that as a part of advisement to be considered is that how the, fi how the fire hydrant system, as well as if there's going to be any parking or play area, or whether that is going, or whether that is going to be uh, any, any uh, within the community and outside the community, there are str stringent requirements that is being developed, that is being put up by the city in order to maintain the hygiene of our environment. For example, the irrigation and uh, the irrigation and the and the sprinkler system, as well as in the particular property within the area, and how that entire is going to be maintained throughout by the city and what are the what are the what are, uh, during the time of a construction, what are the conditional permits uh, they are required to be renewed, 
and as well as part of a consideration that that the how the property is to be is to be maintained within the city such that that it continues to build a reputation for it we are very much aware about that how the toll brothers is operated within the different cities and throughout the united states of america but most importantly that you know what what value that it brings to the city that becomes even more important and equally that you know uh, with the citizens that uh, that you know what what are the some of the benefits that uh, that the company is offering to city as a part of uh, as a part of a development and as well as as well as the criteria for the qualification for the people to to buy to buy a home as a part of a ADU and as well as the new development so thank you very much for the consideration of comments and definitely a uh, couple of points uh, to to consider for the all right thank you thank you mr meta um all right uh miss medina do we have uh you said we had one more yes we have barbara barbara navarro all right thank you uh miss navarro uh, welcome and uh, you have three minutes good evening i just wanted to ask a couple of questions about um electric vehicles if there's any for guest parking and handicapped parking and also, um, I wanted to understand uh, some of these uh, homes. I think the condos are going to be four bedroom. They have two car garages. Um, uh, are are you going to have option for them to have plug ins um, in their garages? I'm just thinking ahead um, because there's a lot of people buying plug ins now and have electric vehicles. All right. Thank you, Miss. Ms. Navarro, um, okay, can I get a motion? Um, uh, can I get a motion to, um, I guess, before we close, can those questions be answered? Um, There's no obligation to answer those questions. If uh, Mr. Kosla would like to take a few moments to answer those questions, he's welcome to do so. Sure, I'll, I'll go ahead and allow that. Uh, Mr. Kosla, if you have any. Uh, yeah, okay, great. Yeah, thank you. And I appreciate the comments. Yeah, with regards, I think the first set of questions had a lot to do with the affordability. Um, you know, we work with city staff to come up with an affordable housing plan that gives like for like for all of the units at the percentages that staff requested. So that's what our current proposal is. Um, and we, you know, we follow whatever the city's affordable housing guidelines are and you know it's based on 80 to 120 um percent uh income area medium income am i so you know we just we don't do anything we're fo we're following with the state and city laws on that we're not we're not trying to deviate from that in any way um and that with regards to electric vehicles yeah we're going to have all the garages will be pre-plumbed for electric um so you can you know plug in your 220, you know, you'll have a 220, which you can, if you want to take the extra step to get the actual, if you have a Tesla, for example, you can buy, I just bought one for like $400. You can buy that Tesla thing and install it on the wall. Um, you, I haven't installed mine yet because it's a pain to get someone to actually do it. So some people just choose like myself right now, just to plug in directly to the, to the 220 um, amp on the side. And they're, yeah, they're all two car garages. We also did something that was kind of cool underneath and this is a lot of Kevin and Ned's kind of ingenuity. We underneath the stairs, because we think it's a pretty flat area. And if you if Parkside, our project next door, is any indication, one, a lot of those people are just working from home um, for obvious reasons. They kind of, you know, after COVID, they just kind of kept that that program. A lot more tech workers. So, you know, if they're going to the office, it's not every single day. So we found a lot of folks are, you know, riding their bikes more. So we were able to get underneath the stairs. We've designed it so you can tuck bikes underneath the stairways, which is a clever way to kind of hide a bike um, and also keep it there if, if you know you don't you don't want to get in your car ever if you don't want to. And I guess the walkability too is what attracted us to the site in the first place. And again, we've really benefited from the location to transit with our with our first project. So I think that answered some of the call. Oh. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kozla. Yeah. Okay. Can I get a motion to close the public hearing? Do I have a question? Um, can we close the public hearing before, uh, and then I'll adjust the questions there. 
Make a motion to close the public hearing. All right, got a motion from Commissioner Bedina Ashby. Do I have a second? Second. A uh, second from Vice Chair Ciardella. Uh, go down the roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Medina Ashby. Aye. Commissioner Awasti. Aye. Commissioner DeLong. Aye. Commissioner Albana. Aye. Vice Chair Ciardella. Aye. And Chair Chuan is aye. Okay, public uh, hearing is, or the public forum uh, is now closed. All right, so uh, at this time, uh, we'll go ahead and have you any questions from the commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Galan, go ahead and yes, ask your uh, question. Yeah, this is regarding about uh, the placement of 55 ordinance, ordinance size trees. And the question is, where do you take this uh, 55 ordinance, ordinance size trees? Where do you take that? Are you going to uh, put it someplace? And what type of trees are you going to replace? Um, my second question is about the demolition. Um, what kind of demolition are you going to use? Are you going to use explosive device? Or for how long that demolitions? Um, or do you need to permit that from the city? And, and then how, what type of trucks are you going to use? Uh, the concern is uh, for sure you're gonna use the big trucks to uh, transfer all those debris. And where do you take those debris? And um, I think that's about it. Uh, Which one, Michael? Or Michael, whoever I don't know who that was directed at. Yeah, I, I, I'd be glad to answer those questions. Um, I, I believe the, the, well, I can answer the the first. Um, the ordinance size trees, I think, will just be simply removed off the site to to clear the site. Um, the hundred and thirty two, one hundred thirty six new trees, uh, they will be. A standard variety the city's used to. Um, the city does have, uh, like for example, a standard street tree is a Chinese pistache um, in a 24 box variety that's going to be planted along the street. Uh, I believe there's some some of the evergreens that they're looking for are, are looking at putting in uh, some magnolia, uh, California incense cedar, um, some of the flowering accent trees include an eastern redbud, uh, lavender crepe myrtle, and a crab apple tree. Um, those are some of the standard varieties that Toll Brothers has proposed. Um, I believe there's strict regulations associated with uh, um, demolition. I may come back to you, um, uh, Nick, regarding how you plan on demolishing the site. I believe it was just standard demolition. Um, one thing I'd like to share is typically um, with demolitions, the city reaches out to the developers for um, the, the fire department, fire prevention. As a matter of fact, reaches out to developers and we partner um, to do fire exercises uh, in these buildings that eventually get demolished. Um, but once they are demolished and the rubble is broken down, there's strict Tell us building practices that require um, the project or the, the the rubble itself be recycled if possible. Um, Nick, I don't know if you can kind of speak to that more if if I cannot. Yeah, and that's great. Thank you again. I appreciate the questions. Um, yeah, so the the there's a the tree plan that we had. We kind of we worked with with staff, and that's the plantings also with our landscape architect just to make sure that what we're planting actually grows. The last thing we want to do is plant something that you know there's not enough sunlight here there's too much sunlight so we took a lot of time um r3 is a bit well respected landscape architect in this area we've worked with them on a number of projects they're in fact working on the one right next door with regards to construction so what's yeah we're not using any explosives for this project typically that that need to be like a um like a really large like a 10-story building where using explosives might make sense because the building can come down in about Nine, I've done one about nine seconds, 10 seconds. Ver, you know, neighbors might prefer that versus longer con, you know, longer construction noise. Uh, we're not proposing that here. I don't think it would it would make any sense. So it would be, you know, just your standard excavators uh for the removal, removal of the buildings, and then you know, materials will get shipped off site, we'll recycle as much as we can. There's a lot of strict county and city and bay area codes and all that, which we'll follow. But I guess what, what happens if, if we're fortunate enough to get approved this evening, then next step would be city council. If we get approval there, there's another at least year period where we're getting doing all of our construction drawings for the actual units themselves. 
and then our improvement plans for all of the infrastructure. And during, and we have to get our final map too. So during that entire process, you know, we will be working back and forth with staff. Um, I'm, they'll require some kind of, you know, plan of how we're going to construct everything, demolition plan. Um, that's typically worked out. What's always, you know, it's worked out post kind of the entitlement phase. And so, you, you know, we'll, we'll, those plans will get developed over six to month, nine months. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're, you know, we're kind of in the middle of this, but still early to where we actually get to construction. I have one more question. Um, how about chemicals? Do you use chemicals during uh, demolition? No, we, we'll use we'll use a lot of water though to keep the dust down. Depending on you know how, if there's you know people are completely usually so the city will require us typically to have water trucks out there at certain times of the year uh, when necessary. So that that would be the only kind of fluids that would be going out there, but not no chemicals. Thank you. All right, thank you. And I uh, just wanted to also see if uh, our building official, uh, Bill Tot, if you had any comments in regards to some of the questions from Commissioner Goulong in regards to demolition. Yeah, no, uh, Nick did a really good job of, of thumbnail sketching what uh, is going to happen. And there's, uh, of course, uh, another uh, part of that is Bay Area Air Quality Management uh, monitors before and after uh, for, um, you know, friable, what they call friable asbestos or things like that. And they have reports that are required. Um, so it's, it's all um, very regimented and, and um, pretty strict, actually. The recycling requirements are all uh, baked into the uh, requirements that are uh, for the developer builder. And uh, so as they progress through the demolition and um, go forward with the uh, tickets, because they, they have to transport this material to certain uh, places to be disposed of and they get tickets and then we we uh, verify those tickets with the um, recycler whomever uh, the materials are going to so it's, it's pretty involved so there's, there's a lot of checks and balances so uh, rest assured that uh, um, this is kind of a SOP standard operating procedure um, for any kind of you know development like this where you have um, you know a demolition that's associated with it all right thank you all right uh, any other questions from any other commissioners? All right. Uh, any other, or if there's no other questions, any comments or deliberations or motions? Can we put the uh, motion up there on the screen or the, um, the recommendations? So any commissioners uh, want to make a motion? Or... I'll... All right, I'll make a motion. Okay, Commissioner Albana. Yes, I'm recommending that we do a motion to adopt resolution number 22-029, recommending the city council approve the site development permit number SD 22-0006. The conditional use permit number UP22-0002, the vesting tentative map MT22-0002, density bonus permit number DB22-001, the tree removal permit number TR22-006, and environmental assessment number EA22-0003, Subject to the conditions of approval. All right, got a motion from Commissioner Albana. Do I have a second? Second. And got a second from uh, Vice Chair Ciarella. Roll call vote. Commissioner Medina Ashby. Aye. Commissioner Awasti. Aye. Commissioner Galong. Aye. Commissioner Albana. Aye. Vice Chair Ciarella. Aye. Chair Chuan is aye. Um, motion passes. Uh, resolution is adopted. Thank you very much for. Um, presentation and, and all the hard work and the time that went into all this. Next item, uh, new business, no items, uh, legalese, any person agreed by any final decision of any board, commission, or department head to the city of Milpitas may appeal the decision to the city council by filing written notice of the appeal with the city clerk within 12 calendar days of date of said decision and paying the required fee. 
this time limit shall be strictly enforced. Uh, adjournment, can I get a motion to adjourn? I Motion I, to adjourn. Okay, got a motion from Vice Chair Ciardella. Uh, do I have a second? I, I second. And got a second from Commissioner Wasti. Roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Medina Ashby. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Wasti. Aye. Commissioner Galong. Aye. Commissioner Albana. Aye. Vice Chair Ciardella. Uh, just before we, I give my vote, just wanted to, this is our last meeting of the year. Um, I wanted to wish everybody a happy holidays and uh, see you all in January 11th. And um, uh, my final vote is aye and meeting adjourned.